We once again have our favorite ships of the Ruby fandom, thanks to the over 2,000 people that participated in the Best Ships poll. This is the third year in a row that we are doing this, and there were a couple surprising changes this time around, as well as the closest race for first place out of any of the polls we have done thus far. The first and second place only being separated by a single vote. And while the voting was ongoing, they were switching places numerous times. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 favorite ships of the Ruby fandom following the events of Volume 8. In our 10th place spot, with 274 votes, we have a fairly surprising one to be this low on the list. Dropping down from our third place last year, we have fair game. The ship between Crow and Clover. It seems its popularity has dropped off quite a bit since the finale of Volume 7 all the way through to Volume 8. And this is probably largely in part because Clover was not featured very much at all in Volume 8. The after effects of his death were still present, with Crow mourning his death throughout the entirety of Volume 8 and still going on in the future, keeping his memory alive and probably carrying his emblem with him for, well, the rest of his days in the Ruby series. Clover has had a significant impact on both Crow's life as well as the fandom, and I'm kind of sad to see this ship so far down on the list. It is the only ship on this list between two male characters, and I think that's honestly a shame. There are plenty of good matchups in the Ruby series, some that are going to be canon, like the one that I put in the thumbnail of the initial poll video, the one between Scarlet David and Nolan Porfirio. If you guys haven't read Before the Dawn, I highly recommend it. That ship is amazing and one of my top favorite ships. And now thanks to people in the comments, I know that that ship's name is uh, Lost Boys or Pirate Booty, so, you know, got a good ship name along with it, and uh, I'm gonna be uh, pushing that ship for a while. I made a video after Before the Dawn released, and, you know, give that ship a look. And also, hopefully Fair Game stays on this list in the future and can maybe climb a couple more spots. And then moving on to our ninth place on this list, receiving 289 votes, a ship that came out of nowhere for me to end up on this list, we have Crosshairs between Velvet Scarlatina and Coco Adele, a ship I'm very happy to see up this far. I love seeing Coco and Velvet high in the polls, but last year they got 16th place. And the year before that, the ship got 14th place. It had never been high in people's minds, at least not in the top 10, but now it just jumped to 9th place. And I feel that's a little bit surprising. I'm wondering if it is largely because Ruby Chibi has returned, Coco is now featured, and especially in the most recent episode, as of the posting of the poll initially, there was the episode featured between Coco and Velvet. I'm wondering if that kind of put it prominent in people's minds, or if this has just been one that's um, been a favorite of everyone, just hasn't been as prominent in people's minds until now. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of this one. I'm happy to see it up here, and, you know, hopefully we can see Coco and Velvet rise up the list even more especially once we see them again in Vacuo. And then in our 8th place spot, receiving 293 votes, we have Black Sun, the ship between Blake Belladonna and Sun Wukong, moving up from 9th place last year. This ship is one that hasn't really gotten a lot of attention since the events of Volume 4 and 5, and probably won't get any more attention until probably Volume 10, when everyone, Team Ruby, Jean, and Neo, make it out of the realm that they are in and get to Vacuo, so Blake can reunite with Sun and make Maybe they will have a chance at the future there, but before that, Bumblebee's going to be getting some attention in Volume 9 with, well, Blake and Yang, as well as the rest of their group, being stranded on that island. Black Sun, I still think, has a chance, and I'm looking forward to seeing these two characters reunite, and really just seeing Sun again on screen and everyone else that we haven't seen for many years now. But hopefully Black Sun will not fade from people's minds. Moving on to number 7 on this list, receiving 307 votes, we have White night, a ship that seems to have risen in popularity from last year's poll as it was 13th place there and is now 7th. It's a little bit strange to me that this ship did rise in popularity, considering that Jean and Weiss didn't really interact that much at all throughout the events of Volume 8, being separated on the two different groups, but one that will definitely have a fair bit more interaction come the events of Volume 9. With both of these two being trapped in the other realm, perhaps they will be separated together and will be able to have a lot more interaction. I've made a video on White Knight all the way back after the events of Volume 5, and is one that I'd kind of like to see play out, especially seeing how their dynamic has changed from the beginning of the Ruby series 
series up until now, and I'm really looking forward to where the relationship is going to go in the future, whether they end up together or separate or otherwise. Hopefully they both live to the end of the series, though. So. We'll see how things play out with that. Moving on to our sixth place on this list, with a jump in the number of votes, receiving 528, we have Nuts and Dolts, up from our seventh place in last year's poll. And it's no surprise that this ship is one of the favorites, given everything that has happened the last two volumes. Penny's return at the beginning of Volume 7, how prominently she has been featured throughout the coming volumes, and then her eventual demise at the end of Volume 8. This ship is one of the original ones all the way back from the early days of Ruby. From Ruby and Penny's first interaction in Volume 1 all the way up until now, everything that they have gone through, it completely makes sense why this is one of the favorites. And even though Penny has moved on from the Ruby series and won't be featured prominently, hopefully we'll get to see her again in a few flashbacks or something of the like, I hope that this ship will be remembered fondly by the fandom. It's one that I'm sure a lot of people won't forget, and I hope it can always stay on this list as well. And then in fifth place, receiving 537 votes, we have White Rose, another one of the original ships from the early days of Ruby, moving up from sixth place in last year's poll. This ship did get a little bit of prominence in Volume 8, with both Weiss and Ruby being on the same team on their adventures throughout Atlas, and will likely have more to show in Volume 9 as well. Possibly Weiss and Ruby traversing this island together if people are separated into pairs or singles, etc. Maybe it'll be a repeat of the Beacon Initiation, where Weiss runs into Ruby and then Yang runs into Blake. Perhaps. We'll have to see how things play out, but definitely a ship that deserves its spot on this list. And speaking of deserving its spot on this list, in our fourth place spot, receiving 571 votes, we have Arcos, the ship between Jean Arc and Pyrenikos, one that has not been featured very prominently since the events of Volume 3. We've had hints of it throughout the volumes here and there, especially when we saw the statue of Pyrrha in Argus, as well as Jean carrying his memories of Pyrrha along with him, and his Crocea Moors having Pyrrha's metal forged within it. But now, Crocea Moors has been broken at the end of Volume 8, so we'll see how that progresses in the future. Regardless, though, even though this ship hasn't had much prominence in the Ruby series itself, it has always retained a top 5 spot in every single one of these polls that we've done over the last three years. I'm really happy to see that this ship has left such an impact on the fandom, and I really hope that the love for it continues into the future. Now before I get to the top three ships in the Ruby series, a lot of you probably have a pretty good idea of what those three ships are, so let me know what order you think they are down in the comments below. I have five honorable mentions to go over. In 11th place, we had Roman Ice Cream, the ship between Roman Torchwick and Neapolitan, another one that hasn't had much prominence since Volume 3, and one that I'm definitely happy to see this high up as well. Hopefully we might get a little bit more of a backstory with Neo and Roman in the coming volume, with Neo being trapped in the other world, along with everyone else, but we will have to see. In 12th place, we have Birds of a Feather, that is down from 8th place in last year's poll. Largely because it didn't get that much prominence compared to last volume, though Crow and Robin did spend quite a bit of time in prison. And with them now on the same ship hovering over Atlas, and probably going to have to journey together for some time throughout Volume 9, we'll see how this ship progresses in the future. And then in 13th place, we had Lancaster, between Jean and Ruby. One that, again, didn't have much prominence in Volume 8, with Ruby and Jean being in separate groups on their journeys throughout Atlas, but now that they are in the same realm together, we'll see how many interactions they have throughout the course of Volume 9, and perhaps this ship will rise up the list. In 14th place, we had Cold Murder between Crow Bronwyn and Winter Schnee, one that didn't really have many interactions this volume either, but still very prominent in everyone's mind, especially from the fight that they had in Volume 3, one of the best fights in the Ruby series. And we'll see what interaction they have when Crow arrives at Vacuo, and likely Winter would be the one to tell him that, uh, well, some people didn't actually make it out of that in-between realm, and uh, we'll see what interactions they have there. And lastly, in 15th place, we have Hunter's Dream or Hummingbird, a ship that we haven't seen on screen before, as it is Crow, Bronwyn, and Summer Rose. We haven't seen Summer on screen other than a few flashbacks here and there, but if Summer is alive, then who knows what may happen, as well as if we get a Team Stark backstory and see more of Crow and Summer's interactions, this one may gain popularity as well. But now getting to the top three ships in the Ruby fandom. In a third place spot, receiving 623 votes, we have 
Rose Garden. As with many of the ships on this list, these two didn't really have that much interaction throughout the course of Volume 8, but definitely had a lot of prominence in Volume 7, and has been steadily climbing the list for every year that we've had this poll. Last year being 4th place, and the year before that being 7th. Now that it's reached 3rd, who knows, maybe it will climb more in the future. Though, unfortunately, in next volume, it definitely will not have that much prominence with them being separated. Oscar being in Vacuo, Ruby being in the Other Realm. And I'm curious to see how these characters will grow when apart. Because since Oscar joined up with the group at the beginning of Volume 5, Ruby and Oscar haven't really been separated for that much. Sure, throughout the course of Volume 8, but that really only took place over the course of a day or two, so seeing them spend some time apart and grow individually when they reunite, who knows what will happen. And I'm curious to see what their interactions will be when they finally do reunite, possibly at the end of Volume 9 or in Volume 10. But we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. And then getting to our top two ships in the Ruby series. Everyone knows what ships these two are, Renora and Bumblebee. These two were separated by only a single vote, and as I said at the beginning of the video, their places switched numerous times. So it's essentially a tie, but one of them did win by a single point. And that winning ship is Renora. Renora received 846 votes, whereas Bumblebee received 845. A very close race, and one that I'm sure will continue into the future. Both of these ships have had a lot of prominence throughout the entirety of the Ruby series, with Blake and Yang's relationship building from the beginnings of Ruby up until what it is now. And with Renora, they have been building in prominence since the beginning as well. They kind of joined the series as an almost couple, but not really, up until Volume 7, where Nora did confess her feelings to Ren, and Ren confessing his feelings to Nora just in Volume 8, and I'm kind of surprised that the race was this close. Both of these ships did have prominence in Volume 8, but Renora, I think, kind of took the spotlight in that regard, with Ren and Nora finally having that heart-to-heart, -heart. Ren coming to terms with his emotions, realizing that he does indeed love Nora. I thought that this one would have won by uh, a fair bit more, but still, it's always been a battle between these two. In all of the polls that we have done, it's been these two that have been in the one and two spots, switching places here and there, but when it comes to the events of Volume 9, I think that we might see a little bit of a shift, that Bumblebee might overtake Renora, as Renora may not be getting that much of a feature in Volume 9, depending on how much we see of the characters in Vacuo, or how much we focus on the characters in the Other Realm. The Other Realm is definitely going to get the prominence, and we have to think about the interactions that these two characters just went through. Blake literally saw Yang die in front of her eyes, or at least what everyone thought was death. So when they are reunited in the other world, well, there's going to be some confessions that happen, and Bumblebee is probably going to become a thing in Volume 9. Volume 9, in my opinion, will be the volume of Bumblebee. And if Bumblebee doesn't end up succeeding there, then perhaps Black Sun will have its chance to shine afterwards. We'll have to see how the events of Volume 9 play out. It will definitely have a large impact for a number of the ships on this list, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how things turn out. Let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are of all of the ships on this list. What ships did you want to make it higher on the list? What ships surprised you being on this list? Like Crosshairs, for example. A ship that I do indeed love, but one that I was surprised jumped from 16th place to 9th place. I'd love to know everyone's thoughts on that, and for those who did vote for Crosshairs, what was your motivation? Was it one that you were reminded of by Ruby Chibi, or was it one that's always been in the back of your mind? And in this poll, since I did allow everyone to vote for their top 5 instead of just their top 3, was it one of your top 5, just not your top 3, and you decided to vote for it this year as well? Finding out things like that is definitely one of my favorite things about doing these polls, seeing how everything changes year to year and how the events of the volume change people's perspectives. So I'm really curious to know all of your guys' thoughts. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys want to see more Ruby content, more Ruby polls like this one, then make sure to subscribe and join the Guild of the Eternal Flame. Our next poll will be on the best outfits of the Ruby series. This will include all of the different outfits of Team Ruby from the beginning of Volume 1, and I'm kind of debating on whether to separate just the outfits of Team Ruby themselves, and then do a poll that has the outfits of every other character, and see which ones is prominent. So let me know on that down in the comments below, whether I should separate it out, or just do everyone in the Ruby series all together. I feel like that would be uh, quite crowded, so I probably will separate it with all of Team Ruby's outfits, and then everyone else's outfits in the Ruby series, and their overall design, etc. But still, let me know. 
tweet me at phoenixknight7, and I'll see you guys in the next video.